Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. James comes in with a question about his system crashing with XMP RAM set on his system RAM. And it is, um, he wants to know if his system will run smoother and be more responsive if he replaces his 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz uh, dual channel RAM, 22222252. Uh, he's got XMP crashes, he's got a 5800X, and um, what else has he got? He's a B, got an X570 motherboard. X570 Azus motherboard. Well, let's take a walk, James, because I don't know how you ended up with that, but unfortunately you might have gotten snared up in the cheapest memory sold a couple of months ago on Newegg or Amazon. There was some floating around. It's I've seen it go out of stock lately, but... DDR4-3200 is normally CL16. It could be sometimes CL15. I have occasionally seen oh, CL17. He's got CL22. CL22 is actually the JDEX spec speeds Whoa. of that RAM. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but it's very conservative settings designed for use in, shall we say, trash panda Dell systems. Poor panda's getting a beating today. Poor panda. Um, so I've if he seen... went to CL16... Well, here's the funny thing. Higher CL ratings are slower. Faster clock speeds are higher. 3200 is faster than, say, 3000 or 2666. So 3200 CL22, in theory, should be the most compatible RAM ever and work in basically anything. However, retail sold 22... CL rating RAM might also be the cheapest pile of junk that exists because it didn't qualify as anything else. It might have actually <laughs> been 2666 or 2400 Denied. <laughs> that they slowed the CL rating down to make it fit, but it really is awful RAM. It is also possible, and this is going to sound weird, that your RAM is too slow for your Ryzen, not because it's not officially supported, but because Nobody tests that. You have an ASUS X570 motherboard. ASUS has tested that motherboard with many RAM sticks, probably none of which were CL22. Here's why. Because when those were launched back in 2019, I do not believe the JDEX spec for um, 3200 was specified. The highest JDEX went to was 2933. Mm. And so JDEX 22 didn't exist at the time, so if Those boards if, have never been tested. If he dropped it down to 2933, would it run better and not crash? Or is it just too slow, period? It might just be really trashy RAM. And it may just not work on that board at all because basically he unfortunately ended up with the very bottom of the barrel RAM that exists. To basically take it out and put in CL16. And, and buy some new RAM. CL16. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would replace the RAM because... Will you have him go up to 36 or just leave it at 32? It doesn't matter. If you buy decent quality, it's a fair question. I, the, the, there's no, I mean, I've, I've got numerous kits of both speeds. I well, did I a video a couple months ago between 32 and 36. It depends on the price. If 32 is similar to 36, go 36. That's true. The only thing being is that at least 32 is more likely to be fuss free. Some of the 36 kits are not. That's yes, true. I know, but he has a trash 32 kit. It's, it's not an exception. If you buy DDR4 3200CL16, that's going to work in everything. If you buy DDR4 3600CL18, that'll probably work in everything. But if you buy DDR4 3600CL16, that's fussier. Our AMD RAM has been fussy. I know, because I have all of those configurations. Yeah, we do. And I've actually got several systems that are fussy on the CPU, and here's what, we'll get to this in a second, where if I change the CPU on the same board, I have to change the RAM kit along with it. 
Uh, one of my systems, I've got a set of DDR4 3600 uh, CL16. 3600 CL16, it's very good RAM. It's uh, Trident uh, Z RGB RAM from G-Skill. And it works with my, with one CPU on the board. And when you take it off and you put a different CPU, I have to take that RAM kit off and I have to put a different RAM kit, which is 3600 CL18. Now you think, okay, well, why don't you just leave the 18 on? Because when I switch back to the other CPU, the 18 doesn't work. Uh, I yes, I remember that frustration. I have pulled my hair out over RAM and Ryzen. It yeah. is freaking annoying. And if you have a Ryzen system and the RAM is being fussy and you're getting weird system crashes and lockups and blue screens and you change your RAM or you take out a RAM stick and it works, I, I, you just buy another RAM kit and you just sell your other RAM kit. And okay, but here's, here's the part that's crazy. Okay, go. He has a Ryzen 7 5800X. That's a great CPU. That's the newest Zen 3, most compatible, fast. It's a great CPU. He has an X570 ASUS motherboard. I'm sure it's very lovely, whatever it is. If he were to take out that 5800X and drop in a different AMD chip, and ironically, it could be another 5800X, but just a physically different one, or a 3700X, or even a 5900X, his RAM might be fine. Yeah. I, it's the memory controller is on the chip, and they're all a little different, and the RAM's all a little different, and the motherboards are all a little different. And I've had situations where it's just, okay, that CPU didn't like that RAM kit. I can take that RAM kit out and put it in a different system. Works perfectly. That, that happened to, I had a, uh, a WoW streamer reach out to me saying that he was having troubles with his system, and he outlined everything that was going on, and I'm like, have you checked the RAM? He goes, why would I check the RAM? I said, well, you seem to have checked everything and it's either the motherboard, it's not the SSD, so it's either the power, power supply or the RAM. I bet you it's the RAM. And he's like, it's not the RAM. I said, all right. So anyway, he comes back and he goes, it was the RAM. I'm like, he goes, how'd you know? I'm like, eh, I might've listened to a few stories. So he's uh, putting some new RAM in and- If I have a system that is crashing, Mm. The very first thing that changes the RAM. Yep. So it's the quickest and easiest, but this requires you have a spare set of RAM, which of course we do because we're tech YouTubers. Yeah. If you don't have a spare set of RAM, the other thing you can do is take all of the RAM sticks out except one. Yep. And then and switch them in and do one stick at a time. Yes, it's single channel. No, it's not. But that for diagnostic purposes, it's either going to work. Who or cares? It's not. Because if you get a stable system with a single stick, then you know one of your sticks is bad. The other thing you can try is switching memory slots. Now, a lot of motherboards say if you're only putting in two memory sticks, there's a specific set to put them in. They don't want you to put them in the other. But you can try the other, and sometimes it'll run a couple, like 2% slower, but maybe the memory slot on the board is fussy. Maybe the traces are yeah, questionable. Exactly. And if you switch the memory slots and it's stable, then it might be your motherboard. I have dealt with all of these issues and the easiest solution to all of them, which doesn't really help a lot of our viewers, unfortunately, is to have a spare of everything on the shelf to be able to go, well, let's try something else. We were having that discussion on the Discord about spares. Yeah, it's just- I mean, if you're gonna tinker with your, and you're gonna build, you need spares, period, so. Well, and that's easy to say. I mean, in, in times past when I didn't have as many spares, there was a period of time in the 2000s where I stopped building PCs. I, I got into the computer networking business and started my first company when I was um, 19 years old, back in the mid 90s. And all throughout the 90s, I built stupid numbers of computers for small businesses. I did very little individual stuff because frankly, there's no money in the individual stuff, but we did small to medium sized businesses between 10 to 50 seat installations in general. I call them medium. Those are really small, but whatever. If you tell the guy who has 30 employees <laughs> that he has a medium sized business that inflates yeah. his ego and it's easier to get the sale. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? In any case, um, but 30 employees is a small business. So I have dealt with this so many times. Well, you ran into that problem when you built your computer in 05. In 05. Yeah, uh, you didn't have spares. I didn't and... have spares. 
Um, I, it was it was frustrating. You're absolutely right. We weren't doing that at the time, and it was uh, it was it was a never ending problem. It was frustrating because something wouldn't work, and it'd be like. So are you just going to run out? And, I mean... I ended up just ordering a pre-built because I got tired of dealing with it. And uh, don't laugh. It was a Dell. But in 2006, when I ordered that Dell, they didn't suck like they do today. Um, that yeah, was, was a Dell XPS Core 2 Duo. It was a bit of a different experience. That was a nice machine. <laughs> that that machine was never fussy. And it was, it was, it was perfectly fine. Um, in, in any case, yeah... Um, so coming RAM. coming back to James and Ryzen and AMD and RAM, you're just going to have to switch it out. I would buy another RAM kit, and I would sell that RAM kit, and I'll bet you all your problems go away. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cashback that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new Crypto Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new Visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you earn Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you earn Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.